This episode of the Disney Dish Podcast is sponsored by touringplans.com, where you can find trip planning tools and advice for Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and Universal Studios Orlando. Disney Dish listeners can subscribe with discount code DISH2013. That's DISH2013. To get 25% off a one-year subscription to touringplans.com. Check it out as soon as you're done listening. Thanks! Welcome back to another edition of the Unofficial Guide Disney Dish Podcast. Like love bugs to Walt Disney World, you can't keep us away. I your windshield. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's the. I think that's the the, the windshield is the FCC. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Or or Disney's lawyers. You never know. So I'm Len Test. I welcome back for another edition uh, today. Jim and I are back. Uh, and uh, for the next couple episodes, we're going to do something interesting. We're taking, we've taken your suggestions on other, uh, new podcast topics, and Jim has gone away and done research and beat people with rubber hoses to get information, and the fruits of, of his labor are now going to be down in, in our podcast for posterity, with, uh, as long as uh, Jim can get, get back from Gitmo. With that, I would like to welcome Mr. Jim Hill back to the show. Jim, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. And and as we were just talking about this, this has actually been great fun for me. You know, the, the people tossing out show suggestions and me having to go away and burrow through books and, you know, run around the Internet and call people and call in favors to get stories. And, <laughs> so, no, the, the, again, I like this. This is a challenge. I, I, I can imagine every time we, we, we bring up a topic, Jim, Jim was like, oh, have I got a story about that? <laughs> and, and, and then it goes from there. So uh, so what's the what's the topic for today, Jim? Well, I, this is, in a weird sort of way, this is kind of a tail wags the dog sort of show. Um, this is about Pirates of the Caribbean, but not so much the ride, but... Rather, how the attraction wound up being the inspiration for, you know, obviously the the, the four soon to be five movies, and and conversely how the pirates movies found their way back into the attraction and then wound up inspiring other things for the park like the uh, the you know, uh, the pirates adventure treasures of the seven sea interactive game. Oh right, yeah. Soft, uh, you know, it's sort of a soft opening of the kingdom and mm -hmm. the legend of of Jack Sparrow attraction for Disney Hollywood Studios, but. Um, what's interesting, just to start off the bat, is that you have to note here that Pirates, the movie, was not the first Disney pirate film to actually wander back into Pirates, the attraction. Really? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was not the first movie to reference Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, no, 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 no. More to the point that, that, that you know... Um, there was a redo of the attraction done in 97. Uh, uh, the, the, politi the politically correct version. That's it exactly. Where where the 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 what is it? The pooped pirate, the one who had been chasing the girl, suddenly became a gluttonous pirate, and yeah. you know suddenly women are ch you know men are chasing women with trays of food yeah, because you know. because they're all deadly sins, but some are more deadly than other, Jim. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> stepping around that one very quickly, exactly. but, um, but anyway, uh, Bob Baranek, the the imaginary who was in charge of this, uh, really really smart guy and. You know, wanted, you know, they were doing this. They were making this fix. He's just like, but that's not enough. We got to give these people more than just making this PC. So they had shut down um, the uh, World of Motion at Epcot mm -hmm. and were, get, you know, getting ready to do a uh, test track. Sure. And Bomb, and I said, like, wait a minute, we got all those AA figures. And, you know, they're sculpted by Blaine Gibson. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, let's, let's go take a look at these. And so he's looking at them and was like, Oh, these would fit. These would be great. And so I don't know if you remember the scene in, um, you know, well, first of all, they, they were harvesting figures so that for the first time ever. It's <laughs> just the way you say harvesting figures. Well, it's like, just, it's like involuntary organ donors to me, but okay, well, go ahead. Honestly, when, when you, when you get backstage at one of these, I remember once, um, when they were doing the Tomorrowland redo in, in 94, uh, was lucky enough to get a backstage tour at Carousel of Progress. And in the middle, you know, in the very middle of the building, I, it is literally this round room that, that all the sets back up to. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, doing the walkthrough and you come, you know, come through the door of one of the living rooms and here are this giant pile of translucent naked figures just heaped in the room. Oh, it's, it's like so, an audio animatronic chop shop. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, these are all of the figures that used to be in the control room 
for uh, Mission to Mars. <gasps> my skin is my skin is crawling just thinking about this. All right. <laughs> but, you know, but it was literally these were the parts. These were the yeah. all right. That thing broke. That arm didn't work. Okay, this is what we're using to to, to rebuild Grandma. They should you they know? should totally do a Frankenstein version of Carousel of Progress with like different sized arms and different sized heads for. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think the how it's the Halloween version of Carousel of Progress. It would be, and they leave the bolts visible. You know, maybe stick some bolts out of out of their necks. But uh... very warm for you. <laughs> you know. All right, we're five minutes into the episode. We're already on Carousel of Progress. That's right. We, we want All right. So anyway, so they're so they're they're going back. They're looking at uh, at these uh, test track uh, animatronics. Yeah, the, the, okay. the, the uh, and, and they're going to do a movie. Figures. Right. And they they come across that scene. Do you remember there was the toll booth scene? In you know where you had this sort of sea of audio animatronic animals and guys trying you know if you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. particularly yeah. there was a zebra that was sitting down that a guy was trying to you know get his hands under its butt trying to yeah, get yeah. it to come back up. Bob took one look at that. Oh, I'm going to use that figure. And so what he they ended up doing is in you know how in the Disneyland version of Pirates of the Caribbean mm-hmm. you go down the waterfall and then you have to go up, up the, the waterfall. waterfall. Yep. And so what Bob decided to do is that on the load hill, you know, the hill you go up to go back to load unload, Mm -hmm. he put two figures who were dragging a giant bag of treasure, you know, with the notion of they were trying to escape. They were trying to get out. You know, they just couldn't make it. But, you know, here's this last little vignette. And so, but Bob thought, you know, it's like, well, what's in this treasure? What's, 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 and what he decided to do, because it's like, you know, nobody had made a pirate movie yet, and it seemed strange that that you know Disney hadn't acknowledged that they had in fact made a pirates movie. The the Peter Ustinov Dean Jones movie from '67, Blackbeard's Ghost. So here, sticking out of the bag of treasure, is a portrait that's been painted of Peter Peter Ustinov dressed as Blackbeard. <laughs> and that's the uh, that's the reference. That's the reference. So that that that's again just just making sure that everybody understands that the, the, they were there was a pirate movie in Pirates of the Caribbean before Pirates of the Caribbean. So Peter Ustinov precedes Johnny Depp. There we go. Is there it we- still there? Um, actually, no. They when they put the um when they did the redo in uh, two thousand five was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, when they put Depp into the attraction. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the, the, the end scene where you have, you know, him in the chair. Oh, right, right. Oh, is that where it went? Where, that's where it went. So, um. It's like erasing the first child because you like the second one better. There you go. There okay. you go. All right. Not that we're suggesting that, mind you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that would be bad. Um, anyway, jumping ahead here. Um, Disney knew, given how popular Pirates of the, the Caribbean was. Do you, do you remember seeing the movie when it first came out, though? Oh yeah, yes I do. Yes and, I do. And, and your reaction was, I you know that that's from Johnny Depp's entrance going forward. Uh, I love this movie. You know, I mean, it, in fact, you know, the the notion of between what Jeffrey Rush did with his role and what Depp did with his role. I mean, it was kind of I kind of felt bad for Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley because it was just sort of like we have to carry the plot, we have to move this thing forward, and here are. You know, here are, you know, Jeffrey Rush and Depp just walking into the movie and just ripping scenes out from under. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, there's really, there was really no no thing for sort of like uh, uh, you know, average acting or you know like standard acting. It was really you had to be every scene you had to be so much larger than 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 everybody else. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, what my favorite part of this that that film was that uh, did you ever hear the story about how Depp got the role? No, oh. I, I I know that uh, I know that there was some dissension within, oh. within and because I, I'd actually read it in the paper, like when they had I guess when they had cast him and they had done some some test shots that even within Disney there was like I mean and I remember reading this like in you know WWE Magic or something that nobody was sure how it was gonna go. Well, that, I mean, face it, you gotta remember this followed Country Bears, which yeah. you know crashed and burned. And, yeah, to the, know, up to this point, Disney did not have a lot of success with turning attractions into films. No, they, okay. I mean they they had tried. For example, they had done a TV movie version of Tower of Terror with you know that that great American the, in, actor the incomparable is Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg, uh, right? There we go. Uh, and you know, so here's Country Bears, where you know, and you know, just you know, with its highlight being you know Christopher Walken being a champion arm farter, and it's just sort of like you know, get it so. 
now, meanwhile, you know, here's pirates, um, you know, moving through the development channels. And one day, Dick Cook at the studio gets a call from Johnny Depp. And it's like, hi, can I come over? And it's like, uh, oh, sure. You know, it's yes. like. At this point, he was Johnny Depp. He wasn't Mr. Depp. No, that's right. it exactly. Yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> right. okay cool. Why would Johnny Depp want to have them a meeting with me? You know, this and, is... and he's done, he's done at this point, he's done like Edward Scissorhands. He's known for his quirky roles. That's it exactly. Right. But, but, and... but in quirky roles in not well performing movies generally, right? That's it exactly. Okay. That's it exactly. Right. So, so he, he has this meeting with Duke Cook and he basically explains that his children are now of an age where they're spending a lot of time on the couch with daddy watching Disney films. And, you know, and, and Depp is like, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but these movies are good. You know? <laughs> just, just, and, you know, if you're ever looking for somebody to do a voice for one of these things, I just wanted to give you a heads up that, um, you know, I enjoy what they're doing over there and I'd love to take part in if there's ever a role, give me a call. And, and, you know, here's Cook sitting, you know, it's like I got Johnny Depp in my office and I've got the script for, you know, parts of the Caribbean here. And it's like, and kind of goes, well, you know, I, I, I can talk to them, but, you know, we're, we're, we're making a, a movie of Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny, it's so funny that you came in today. <laughs> and, and, thing, and Depp literally says, pirates with, like, swords? It's like, yeah. It's a, and Depp says, I'm in. And that was the negotiation. That was it. You know, just, really? you, know, you know, don't, you know, not a question of call my agent, get me a script. Da, da, da. That was it. Depp was in from that moment going forward. Um, so he wanted to be a pirate. He wanted to be a pirate, but he wanted to be a very specific pirate. He went off and did his research, and he discovered that pirates were basically the rock stars of their era. So, and he, being very friendly with Keith Richards, modeled, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow after that. And you know, Keith so Richards, was, Johnny Depp. How did? How did? How did? They, I, I guess. I mean, I, I see Hollywood celebrity rock rock star. I get how they travel sort of in the same circles, but. How do they? How do they meet? How do they hit it off? Because there's there's like a twenty year difference between them, right? Or thirty year difference between them? Well, you, you got to remember that, that Johnny actually ran one of the the better clubs in. in oh, that's right, the Viper Room. Right, Viper. right. never mind. And okay, so yeah, just they, they you know they sort of met there, and more to the point, you know the fact that Johnny spent more time in France away from, you know, um, yeah, the industry. You know that they, they, they the, that's kind of Keith's motif as well. That that you you come, you make your money, you go home. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I thought, uh, I thought his motif lately was, uh, I swear to God, this is the last tour we're ever going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worked for them for 30 years, Jim. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, the, in fact, the, the irony there, do you remember that the Simpsons episode that was set in the future where, where, you know, at one point they show, I think it's Lisa's uh, college room. And she's got a you know a, a poster on the wall for the the Stones' latest tour, which is the Steel Wheelchair Tour. Uh, <laughs> and you know that was a joke twenty years ago. Where it's oh yeah, they can't possibly still be. To-. And here we are. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. So so Johnny Depp decides he's gonna that that the pirates were the rock stars of the era, which I believe. Mm-hmm. All right. So he comes up with. You know the look that he comes up with between the eyeliner and the gold cap teeth. In fact, that was the funniest thing when he came in to show off his look to Disney. Yeah. So 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 okay. So he he calls Disney. He says, "Okay, I've I've got an idea here. How do, how does he walk into the into the the into the office? Does he walk in in full regalia, or does he like?" Well, you know, that that was the interesting thing. In fact, you know, that that in hindsight, he actually was kind of brilliant about it because he, he wanted a couple of gold cap teeth. So he had the guy cap all of his teeth, which freaked out the Disney executives. And so then it was like, well, can he get rid of most of them? So he finally got back to what he really wanted. But I mean, that's Depp is not a stupid guy. Uh, but But at the same time, if it hadn't been for the fact that Dick Cook was so solidly in his corner, and running interference. Um, when the first set of dailies came in, it was just sort of like, "Is he drunk? Is he gay? What the hell is he doing?" All right. So, so Depp comes in. Is he is he is he presenting Captain Jack Sparrow the way that we we know Captain Jack Sparrow? Is there, I mean, is is Depp's take on on the character essentially the character we see on the on the film, or is there a discussion about you know what that? Well, what the, I think he the... and Gore decided that you know they knew that. Gore, first, yeah, the, the, the Verbinski. Gore Verbinski, the, okay. the, the director of the uh, actually the first three pirate films, okay. um, and in fact, the, the, he and Depp so enjoyed working together. They're they actually they're the team that 
that kept uh, Lone Ranger alive at Disney, and okay. we'll get to see their latest collaboration in July. Um, anyway, uh, long story short, um, they decide, let's just do a look, and let's not let them in on the whole sunburned, addled, your delivery just yet. Let's just give them the look. Let's, you know, let's not give them the full package. And that let's, was the thing. Let's wait till we're on the set to, until yeah, it's, until it's exactly. practically too late. Okay. That's right. But we're the Caribbean. You know, they can't really get after us. Yeah. And that's how it happened. Okay. I, so they start, so they, they go to, we're in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Where, where do they go in the Caribbean to film? Um, well, they, they're all over the place. I mean, that, that's the, in fact, there's, oh, there's a very thriving industry right down there now where they will take you on a boat and run you to the various different locations. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, that's the thing that, for example, I, and in fact, that's the, the toughest part of when you look at the movies, trying to parse stuff out. In fact, one of the reasons Disney really kind of downplays, you know, hey, you know, you want to go to the locations of where parts of the Caribbean shot was shot because a lot of the times they're shooting at Universal. Uh, <laughs> it's you know, and it's, now don't get me wrong. You know, the Universal people, you take the Hollywood tram tour, they talk that up left and right. Air a water tank, that's where the mermaids were, and and you know, Stranger Tides, and go through the European streets. Yeah, this is the pirate village from all of the pirate movies, and oh, you know, so Disney, you know, just sort of like. Eh, they shot various locations. Very, right? yeah, really all over. I mean, the, yeah. the, the Caribbean gym is really inside all of us. It's really more of a spirit than a no, physical you, place. No, <laughs> need to get really definitive about who shot where. Okay, you know? so so all the so they start filming. So all the crews together, the cast. What does the cast think of Depp? Um, the cast. Well, that that's the interesting thing. I, I there's an interview with Orlando Bloom where it was like, you know. I, and he performing his first scene with Depp, and it just, you know, they finished and turns to the director. It's like, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> does he, does he know at that point? I guess it's like it's like you know somebody who's who's never heard of American basketball walking on the court and being assigned to to, to guard Michael Jordan. Like, uh, okay, this wasn't what I was expecting, right? <laughs> but but the interesting thing is actually there is a moment that that. Bloom eventually got so good at imitating what Depp was doing. If you remember the scene where they're actually going to Ile de Morta, you know, and they're they're making their way through the shipwrecks and the um, uh, the sharks and all that, that uh, the, uh, the Bloom's character is having an interaction with the, the Gibbs character. Oh yeah, and and he's, he's, he's mimicking. Uh, yeah, he's, he's mimicking. He's, uh, yeah. Is he okay? And it just sort of, for a moment, Bloom actually, you know, sort of... Yeah, and he was, he's, you know, he's, he's the old, uh, and he makes the face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yes, but you know exactly the scene. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> and he's doing, like, the, the head jerk, like, you know, over there. <laughs> no, anyway, oh, so. they, they, they do finally wrap production, and, you know, they're, they're, they're cutting it together. And you got, now you got to understand that Disney on the heels of what had just happened with country bears didn't know what was going to happen. And, and, you know, and Disney had tried in the past to, to get stuff going with pirates. I mean, for example, there was, um, there was serious development work done in a pirates, the animated series that was supposed to be part of the Disney afternoon lineup. Um, Hmm. in fact, they were looking to create, they thought if they created a pirate show, they could sort of pair it with Gargoyles, which was was kind of a darker, more serious animated series. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, I mean, if you remember, in fact, this is one of the things that, that kind of puzzles me, that the one, the last new attraction to go into Disney Quest, and this was in 2000, was Pirates of the Caribbean, yep. Caribbean Battle for Buccaneers Gold. And, you know, look, they're clearly aware of the technology. I mean, it, it they went back and reused it for Toy Story Mania, the, you know, the, the pulled the string cannon thing. Mm-hmm. Um, why is it you have this multi-billion dollar film franchise and you, you've you also done your, you know, in between this time, there's also been, you know, an attempt to cash in on pirates with the, that, you know, massive multiplayer online game. Yep. So they've done CG versions of these characters. Oh, that's right. I remember. They, I forgot they did the uh, the online game. That's right. You could uh, you could walk through. This was after what the second film. Um, it was right before between the first, the first and the first second. and second. Yeah, right mind before... you, there was a very long beta, and it took them quite a while to to finally get it out there. But yeah, 
I mean, it, but there was a to... there was a Nintendo, there was an NES game. There were there are a couple, There's I think. All of these assets, and nobody has ever gone back to that game, and you know, and brought in, you know, Jack Sparrow or or you know Barbosa or Davy Jones, and it's just sort of like, and in fact, it, it as we walk through the rest of the show, it's just one of these things where it's kind of the one glaring time that Disney didn't do the obvious. It's like. You have this right. It's a pirates, you know, a pirates right. interactive game. In, Why didn't in, you change it out in Disney World? I guess there's not enough money in it. I, you know. All right. So, uh, so they're doing the dailies for yep. the cut. They've done the. They've 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 finished the principal photography mm-hmm. of the uh, of the film. They somebody's got to go through and edit it, and I guess they're presenting it to. So at this time, uh, who is the who's the CEO? Well, this is Eisner, and Eisner, in fact, what was kind of interesting is they had sort of moved past dealing with Johnny's performance. It was actually a, a kind of a a real back and forth between Disney and Gore Verbinski because they were being so penny pinching about this. Because again, um, you know, in fact, this is what's kind of sad. They were they thought of the two Disney themed movies, uh, Disney attraction themed movies that year, that, you know, Pirates was going to do okay, but the really big hit was going to be Haunted Mansion, which was coming out that fall. With and Eddie so, Murphy. Eddie Murphy. And, you know, uh. and, and that was being shot in, in Raleigh Studios right in Burbank, so Disney could go over the hill and look at what Rob Minkoff was doing and talk with Don Hahn, you know, the producer, and so, you know, they were very more hands-on with that one, and so, again, meanwhile, Pirates is shooting in the literal Caribbean, and they're you know they're going after Gore about do you really need to go have the guy in the inflatable boat make a second pass you know on the sailing ship to get coverage, and he's like yes yes we're I'm shooting an action <laughs> sequence I'd like to have the other side of the boat it's sailing <laughs> in that direction in the shot you know I don't want to flop the shot yeah. and I mean it just it got you know really nasty and. That actually helped in a lot of ways because they were, you know, people stopped talking about Depp and started talking about how re- unreasonable Gore was. And anyway, so they cut it together. They get it back in the studio, and it's like, holy crap, this is kind of good. And, you know, well, you know, but look what happened with Country Bears. We all thought that would do something. Yeah. Um, so there's thing- no, so so they've, they've got the movie together, right? And yeah. at some point, I mean, Disney knows merchandising. They know promotion and stuff. D- does anyone think to do any sort of merchandising for this film? Well, I, I, you've hit upon a really interesting issue in regard to pirates. Um, it turns out that, yeah, you can do a T-shirt with the Pirates of the Caribbean from the film characters. Mm-hmm. But when you start to walk out and say, okay, let's do a pirate ship. Let's do a playset," And the problem is that when you're a parent... And, you know, your kid says, oh, I want a pirate ship. You go to the store and, yeah, there's the official, you know, Disney Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, pirate ship playset for fifty, sixty dollars $60. And then mm-hmm. you look and here's the play school pirate ship for 20 uh-huh. And a pirate ship is a pirate ship is a pirate ship. And they found some real resistance to, you know, the, to the merchandise, um, which – you know, became an issue for the Targets and the Walmarts of the world. On the other hand, the studio, from the moment, you know, that the this thing hit theaters and, you know, just started making the sort of money it did. I mean, the first film worldwide made $654 million. Yeah. I remember I remember seeing it in the theater. I remember, I still remember where I sat in the theater, which theater I went to and everything. And, you know, from, from the very beginning where the, the young Elizabeth Swan Starts by singing "Yo Ho." I yep. I knew they had sort of, and you know, with the, remember with the fog coming in, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of knew, like even with the the opening sequence, that they they got the feel of the attraction right. Well, that in the and, movie. and and, and it, I'm so happy you bring that up because that's Ted Elliott and Terry Ruscio. Um, uh, you know, they, these are the guys who wrote Shrek. These are the guys who wrote Disney's Aladdin, um, and they loved the attraction, so they made sure. Whether it was the dog with the key with, you know, uh, Jack Sparrow in prison or it was, you know, when we meet Gibbs the second time, he's the guy laying down with the pig. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just there were all these little tributes and nods to 
the attraction, but at the same time, it was it was a legitimate entertainment all by itself. It was a it was a fun script. Yeah, they didn't feel like they they had to stay within the story because the the story is actually other than you know some of the some of the scenes, the story is actually external to the ride. There's not a lot in the movie that's in the ride, right? That's the whole not story yet. about the bucking your gold not and yet. stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they'll get there. But yeah. um, anyway, you asked about the merchandising. The weird thing is the one item that took off and continues to sell today is the tri-corner hat with the dreads. That's right. Uh, it's all over the parks. That's right. Yeah, no, that's it exactly. It was, entered, it was the most popular Halloween costume in 2003, 2004 and continues to sell today. Wow. And so, you know, but obviously Disney knew they had this huge hit on their hands, so they... They, you know, they immediately turned to Ted and Terry and can we do a follow up? And Ted and Terry go away and it's like, how do you feel about a trilogy? Uh, and they're like, perfect. You know, and, <laughs> Even better than I do about a duo. <laughs> you know, it, and it, 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 but at the same time, it's one of these things where same thing. You got to go back to the, you know, the Caribbean. But this time it's like, whatever shot you want, Gore, go ahead. Yeah, you know, go you want to circle around the boat with the inflatable raft and shoot you. Go ahead. We, we can have flying fish carry the cameras if you want. I mean, I'm sure That's we can right. get that done. <laughs> You know, and meanwhile, now Disney is looking for ways um, to 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 cash in, so to speak, to to walk this out into the parks. And now we've already talked about the the, the multiplayer. You know, it was announced in two thousand five uh, and was scheduled for release in two thousand six, and just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And you know, um, it, it now is basically dead. Yeah, is it still uh, is it still out there? Well, yeah. In fact, you know, the, the interesting thing is there are still people who are in that world who've been petitioning Disney about, well, can you revisit this? Can you, you know, can you, can you upgrade? And Disney's like, eh, yeah. have you seen Disney Infinity? Um, yeah, that's right. This was in they were going to do Warcraft. It was going to be like their Warcraft or their... Uh, that's their, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's it exactly. And, you know, it just it turns out that, you know, World of Warcraft is World of Warcraft. You, you, yeah. just, you can't... You know, catch that. But not to say that Disney didn't kick the tires on a lot of ideas. I mean, in fact, if you hammer online hard enough, you can come up with the concept art for the Pirates of the Caribbean water park. Um, that, really? You know, yep. They were, you know, it, it's, you know, the idea basically is that it's, you know, this was initially supposed to go be considered as a third water park for well, Disney World. It was also considered um, for for Hong Kong, and and it is being revisited in a, a different form for Shanghai. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the hey, you're right. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, isn't that an amazing piece of art? You know, that's why. Wow. So what I'm looking at here is uh, so it's a, a blue sort of black and green lazy river. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got uh, you, know, you know the uh, the opening scene of of pirates where Captain Jack Sparrow is on the top part of the mast of his ship, and he's he's there, and that's sort of the icon on the uh, on the ship. But uh, it looks like people with a lazy river with uh, with you know like a th- one two three four five story tall waterfall going by. I mean, it's very piratey looking too. It's called Pirates of the Caribbean Water Adventure. Yep, yep. And wow, I, 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 interesting. Yeah. But again, it was it was one of these notions. Oh, where, by the way, sorry. Uh, uh, the the Google search for that is Disney Pirates of the Caribbean Water Park concept art. There you go, folks. Right, there you Enjoy. go. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Knock yourselves um, out, kids. Sadly, the the I, I the other one there is no art out there. I have, however, talked to the writer of the show. But uh, during the time where people were moaning as loud as they were about Chantatiki Room under new management. Mm-hmm. There, there was a like. All right, well, we really need to do something about this. Somebody pointed out. Well, look, it's it Walt Disney World. It's no more than a hundred yards away from Pirates of the Caribbean. Could we maybe do something with that? And there was a script written basically for a show that was actually supposed to be hosted by a Jack Sparrow lookalike. And basically, the story was that Captain Jack Sparrow was getting ready to go back out to sea and felt that he needed uh, a parrot. And this was the premise of the show was all of the birds that were in the Enchanted Tiki Room were now auditioning to become Captain Jack Sparrow's parrot. Oh, uh, interesting. It's a, kind yeah. of a, a thin concept, but okay. All right. Yeah, well, that that's one of the reasons it never made it out of committee, but it, it, it was done. So, so right, was, anyway. a, was a script written on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just, I'd love to you know, see that. And that's, part of the problem was that it just... 
again, it was keeping it going for more than five minutes. And yeah, it's it's got know, it's got like a couple of gags, and then you can't stretch it out to seven minutes. I guess. And and that was the thing. It yeah. just you kind of laid there, and you know the the belief was you know as unpopular as uh, you know under new management was with a certain portion of the. Um, you know the 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 Disney fandom. If they did this, they, you know, they'd come at us with torches and pitchforks. So it's yeah. like let's just leave it be. And eventually, of course, they reverted to the old tiki room. Sure. Um, anyway, so now jumping ahead. So the first of the the pre or the sequels, Dead Man's Chest, opens uh, in two thousand six and uh, does amazing box office. You know, worldwide one yeah. uh, one point six billion. But the interesting thing, this is when Disney does start to get serious about bringing it into the park. So you have, for example, the Pirates tutorial uh, that that's launched. Oh, in- that's right. The it's a live uh, it's a live action thing, right? It's a so it's a show. Yep. Now, what's kind of interesting is that in California, they really don't have the space to do tutorials. So they they just start bringing Jack out as a face character. And what was bizarre is they, in, they in Adventureland, up- yeah, because Adventureland's sort of narrow and thin in uh, in Disneyland. It's not, it's not as big. It, uh, well, the, walk- the, was- the interesting thing is they actually brought him out in uh, at the edge of New Orleans Square. That that you know, obviously with pirates being there and all that, and they ended up with hour long lines. Oh, that's right. Yeah, mostly women who <laughs> you know wanted their picture taken with Captain Jack Sparrow. In fact, what was kind of interesting was that. There were a couple of women who actually stocked the performers who played Jack Sparrow. In fact, you know, the tweet, Disney tweet, security, tweet, 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 tweet. yeah, and Disney legal had to kind of step in in a couple of cases and like, you can't come back into the park for a while. You're you're yeah. crazy. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, again, trying to make use of the assets in interesting ways. That this was when they actually moved the Flying Dutchman ship to Castaway Key, uh, and it w- was actually there for four years till. In 2010, they kind of moved it over to the other side of the island because something that was built as a film set isn't necessarily meant to stand in the sun and water all day. And, and storms in the Caribbean, yeah. There we go. There yeah, we go. It's a set piece, um, not, a, uh, not, a, not an, uh, an actual prop, right? There you go. All right, so anyway, jumping forward now, um, we end up um, – this is also the period where they decide um, – that they're going to do something in California. That they they do the pirates' lair. Uh, they they take on Tom Sawyer's on Tom's Island. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and and do the overlay there in two thousand seven. But this is also the year that that they introduce the the rethemed pirates. That where they put Jack Sparrow in, where they put Barbosa in, and where they create the Davy Jones Miss Curtain. And Adep, you know, was was actually thrilled when Disney asked to do this, and it was. You know, very much a collaborator with the Imagineers on on the figures, but sadly Johnny didn't get the gag he wanted to put in the attraction. Which, really? Well, what he wanted, you know, how you you see the character now. The first time you see Jack Sparrow, he's, he's hiding yep. between two you know female dress forms and yeah, in the you know, sort of uh, in the donkey scene, the scene. Yeah, yeah. What Depp wanted was like, well, wouldn't it be funnier if? The first time you see Captain Jack Sparrow is in the auction scene, you know, and but the way you see him is that, you know, here's the, you know, the 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 auctioneer with the the heavy set, you know, girl on, on the thing. But everyone wants the redhead. But, you know, what you see if you're watching the redhead is every so often the corner of her dress goes up. And what you see is there's. Captain Jack Sparrow hiding under her dress between <laughs> this woman's legs, you know, trying to suss the situation. The effect of, all right, how do I get out of here? You know, I'm, I'm, you know. Oh, that would have been funny. It, it, it would have been, but um, a little too, a little too <laughs> risque for Disney. <coughs> Just a little. So, anyway, the uh, uh, the redhead actually makes a makes an appearance in the uh, in the films too, right? Yeah. The, well, the, I, again, that's in, the yeah. fun part of um, getting two more of these movies is that, you know, Ted and Terry got to fold in more pieces of the attraction and, you know, did, and pay tribute in interesting ways. Um, anyway, uh, you know, that movie come you know, so now 2007, we have uh, At World Ends, the trilogy for now is over, and Disney's what's it, what's having discussions the film? about further films. What do you think of the third um, one? But th- again, they're looking for ways to... To keep it alive. So now at the Magic Kingdom of Florida in um, in 2008, you have the launch of the Princess or the Pirates and Princess Party. Right, I remember those. And, yeah, and 
you know, Disney spent big bucks on trying to, to, to make this. I mean, they can, for example, they had the special nighttime parade. They actually built a 39 foot long pirate ship, ship. float yep. just for this parade. Special fireworks. Yeah. And yeah. it never quite caught on. And, and, you know, in fact, Disney thought, you know, we positioned it right. We've got it going in January through to late spring, yep. you know, during a time when we don't really have much going on in the kingdom. And, um, there was just, nobody quite knows why it didn't catch, but eventually, you know, Disney is like, all right, this isn't working. Um, yeah. I just con- think it's, it, it's, it wasn't enough of a draw. So there are a couple of things going on. One is they had done the pirates, Lair stuff. They had the movies coming out. <clears throat> they had done the, the tutorial. I think at some point people were starting to get pirate fatigue and that, that well, may have been the, the first sort of, the first sort of indication of that. And then, you know, the princess, I think, I think there actually is legitimate princess fatigue no 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 in, doubt in no parts. doubt you know it, in fact that's 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 why they they so enjoy having films like uh tangled or brave or you know coming up frozen because th- yeah. those actually do reinvigorate when you bring the new characters in yeah people get excited about all of them again sure. um anyway jumping ahead here so we had the bippity boppity boutique open in april of 2006 that was a huge success uh you know so again you know to, with the notion of okay if print little girls like to dress up as princesses, maybe little boys like to dress up as pirates. So that's when, in June of 2009, you get the Pirate League uh, opening at the Magic Kingdom as part of the Pirates of the Caribbean complex. Uh, and, and again, struggled for quite some time to really catch on. Uh, but I, there's a lot of people who believe the reason within the company who re- believe it didn't catch on was the way another one of these you know, um, uh, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor situations where the door was literally in the wrong place. You know, yeah. people coming off the attraction could <clears throat> look in and see, Oh my god, look at that. I want to go do that. So this is gonna sound funny. I actually don't know where Pirates League is in the it's, Magic King. If you can believe it, you you come off the attraction, you walk through the gift shop, as you're heading out back to Caribbean Plaza, mm-hmm. directly to your left, and this is the thing, you can walk by it without even knowing it's there. Uh, it's it's almost you have to you, instead of heading straight out the door. If you hang a hard left just as you're about to exit, Pirates League is right there. In fact, they have this wonderfully detailed entrance to the building that uh, or to the shop where it, it's supposed to look like uh, you know that that they had to basically fight their way into the room. I mean, there's cannonball, you know, uh, clearly cannonball impacts I, in the wall. I've, I've walked by that maybe. Th- Three and four hundred times. I, I don't even know it's there. It's it. You know, it's right there. <clears throat> it's true. It's the Monsters Inc. problem where they the there's no there's no clearly defined uh, border or no entrance. So you know, just I have to go. I have to go look for it now. No, no, and it's definitely worth checking out. And, and in fact, it it does speak volumes about the fact that you know when they they launched the Disney Fantasy that they they the first ship to have a Bibbidi Bobbidi boutique, they actually made it so they could swap that out. Um, so one night, in fact, you know, the night that they're having pirates, the pirates night, ship, yeah, yeah. that it, that becomes the pirate. Oh, that's right. So yeah, so the so not only did the uh, did the theme parks get a pirate thing, but uh, when you're in the Caribbean on a Disney cruise line, one night of the uh, of the the cruise is dedicated to pirates in the Caribbean, and everyone dresses up like pirates. The uh, the crew dresses up mm-hmm. like pirates. Not the not the officers, but the uh, but the, the I guess the non coms the uh, the uh, the other crew members do. And I mean, guests bring. Yeah, they're they're these boots that I, I have no idea where else they would wear them in real life. They're the mm-hmm. the big black boots, sort of folded over, you know, shiny. They uh they've got fake swords. They've got eye patches. It's uh it's really neat. Right, and and if you want to tackle one of the supreme ironies of the situation, I don't know if you actually got on the magic, you know, during the first couple of years that it, you know, the the first ship of the Disney Cruise Line, because one of the shows that was in rotation on the first set of cruises was actually a pirate themed musical. And it was called Voyage of the Ghost Ship. And it was you know, guests could not, you know, it's like, we hate that show. We want to see characters. You know, I mean it, it was one of the very first things to get cut. And, really? Yeah. I mean it just you know, just kind of ironic that you go from that where people, oh, I'm on the the, the ocean. I don't want to see pirates. I want to see Mickey <laughs> Donald movie. And now, you know, you build an entire night of entertainment on the ship around, you know, the pirates and the pirates movies and all that. That's funny. Um, anyway, speaking of, of things that, you know, this is another one of those 
what might have been situations. Um, and and again, it's sort of doubling back on the you use princes, you know, what you do with princes as, as your your template for what you're going to do with pirates. Obviously, character dining, you know, whether it's Cinderella's Royal Taylor Bill or the Princess Storybook thing mm-hmm. over at Epcot's Anchor House. I mean, it's ridiculously popular. So it's like they seriously looked into doing pirate theme dining. Really? Where um, at? Well, this is the thing. It was they, the venue they were looking at was the Adventureland Veranda. Okay, fair you know, enough. I mean, right. You know, it's been standing empty forever. I mean, you know, what are they using it now? Ever since Kikoman left. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, no, that, that's it exactly. And, and you know, right now it's it's where they do uh, the, the Disney Fairies meet and greets. Right. And, uh, actually, during um, On Stranger Tides, when they were doing both Jack Sparrow and Angelique, that was where you would go to meet Angelique. Okay. Um, anyway, so they were really eyeballing this hard. And so they actually did a test. And in fact, this, for those of you who kind of want to peek at the future of what, what's going on at Walt Disney World, if you happen to be over at Port Orleans, all right, and particularly the French Quarter, uh, as you come into the lobby to the left, there's where the old sit-down restaurants Bon Famille's is located. Mm-hmm. This is... Disney for Walt Disney World, their test area for any restaurant they're potentially going to try for the resort. What they'll do is they'll, it's, you know, it's basically a a blank stage now. What they'll do is they'll go in and prop it for whatever restaurant they're, you know, for example, when they're going to do the, uh, the new Italian restaurant with the superheated, you know, the the wood fire pizza places. Mm -hmm. They, they created a miniature version of it in there so they could walk the executives in and say, this is what we're thinking of doing. Um, In the case of the, the Pirates of the Caribbean thing, um, they did this whole elaborate, you know, it, it was a tavern. And you sat down and they brought you pirate scrub. And then in the middle of the meal, here comes, you know, Jack Sparrow in the door. And they got their very best Jack Sparrow impersonator. And yeah, some, know, of them, some of them are actually pretty good. I mean, some of them, some are, of them are amazing. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're there for a minute or two, they could pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, he goes from table to table and he's looking for rum and he's picking pockets. And it's wonderful. It's charming. And what killed it is that, you know, and this is what's kind of interesting about um, the setup of the old eventual and veranda. Um, they don't have an actual kitchen back there. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not a quote unquote, you know, full kitchen. So, so what is the, where's that back up to? It backs up to, oh, uh, Country Bear. Yeah. So they, they're, not gonna, they're not going to put it in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, and it shares, you know, space. With, um, you know, it's it sort of, if you, you look at it from above, there's kind of a, a you know, they, there's a shared space with Country Bear, or I mean, um, Pecos Bill. And, yeah, but that's not a, uh, that's not a uh, sit-down restaurant. Sort well, of. No, that's it exactly. So it's just one of these things where it's like, if you're going to do full meals and if you're going to be charging people Cinderella Royals table prices, and it was just like, how much money are we willing to spend on this? And at that time, it was like, are we really going to do Pirates 4 and 5 and 6? Because I'm not sure I want to spend this money. So uh, it wound up getting tabled, um, which is genuinely ironic when you consider what happens in 2010. I mean, here you have the Caribbean Beach Resort. And they have they have a set of, of the six villages they have at, the, at that resort. Mm-hmm. They have the Trinidad South. Because it's so far away from old Port Real, you know, it's just it's it's literally it's so far out there that it's constant. You know, guess this is the, the when yeah, people guess hate to, going out there because it's the middle. I mean, it's the farthest point from the lobby. Yep, you're you're a pretty you're a pretty decent hike away from uh, old Port Royal, the uh, the food court. Everything, everything. everything yeah. there, there, there is no advantage to staying to this place. So what Disney decides to do is they take the 384 rooms that are in Trinidad South. And they retheme them to Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, and so suddenly they do. They could. They do the furnishings different. They do the artwork. They actually etch um, pirate ships into the uh, the foam marble of the wall. I guess the, the fiberglass wall of the showers. So they, there's we actually have room video up on room uh, video of the room up on YouTube. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll I'll post it in show show notes. But anyway, uh, yeah. Long story short, they open it. They suddenly go from the least popular 
rooms at Caribbean Beach to the most popular, to the point where there's such demand, Disney jumps the cost of the room per night, $30. Yep. And, <laughs> it's $30 a night for, for a moderate. And, and this, people don't this even is, bat an eye. Yeah, this is yeah. when a moderate was 100 bucks. So, you yeah. know, it's like... Yeah. So, I mean, what, what are you going to do? It's just like... You know, um, and, yeah. and, and if anything, they get even more popular in 2011 because here comes uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And, you know, this is when you introduce the, the Angelique Walkaround character in the parks. And this mm-hmm. is when Ian McShane recorded the new uh, Blackbeard Mist Curtain for the attraction. And mm-hmm. uh, this is also when uh, previous year World of Color had opened at uh, DC's yeah. California Adventure. Mm-hmm. It has kind of a, a Pirates vignette in it. But, and again, interesting how Disney trying to make Synergy work. They they add this extended sequence to the attraction, uh, you know, the, this nighttime water pageant. Which, and it's only there to promote Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Ha. Huh. Uh, you know, um, and but that works, you know, and everyone, you know, and so we continue to march forward at this point. And again, we've already mentioned the, you know, uh, kind of the Disney fantasy launches with its uh, Bibbidi Bobby boutique, you know, Pirates League. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing for me is how they just won't stop adding pirate movie stuff to pirate the attraction. I mean, uh, October of 2012, suddenly here come the mermaids. And Yeah, and, and no one was really, this was interesting for me because no one was really clamoring for mermaids. I mean, it was, it was a, it was an interesting sort of subplot in the film, but I, you know, it was, for me, it was, it was more than filler, but it wasn't like, you know, this was a, this was a, a linchpin of the, uh, of the plot, right? It's sort of like a, a secondary character. And, and they decided to put that in the ride. And I, 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 it's I guess it's nice and everything because it's an extra. It's a it, you're in the uh, you're in the cave scene at the very beginning of the um, at the very beginning of the of the ride, right? Mm-hmm. And that that's the part that's sort of the, the the transition experience. You're sitting atmosphere. You're trying to get people used to what the visual sort of style of the ride is going to be like. And they put these um, these mermaid effects in there, and it's good because the that part of that particular part of the ride was maybe thirty or forty seconds where. Um, you, you didn't really see much other than the uh, the waterfall. So there's an uh, there's an extra visual element there. I get it. The the thing that uh, I I had always questioned was who who really wanted that there. All I can tell you is that you know, and in fact, you you can see this that you know when somebody wants to become an Imagineer, they it's usually because they've fallen in love with one of two attractions. They've either fallen in love with the Haunted Mansion. Or they've fallen in love with Pirates of the Caribbean. And if you look back over the past 10 years about how many different times those two attractions have been plussed in different ways, yeah. where you, you have other attractions of the park that, you know, it's been 30 years since somebody went in and did anything. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, yeah, we need mermaids. It's like, really? We, we really need mermaids. You know, because yeah. like you said, that 30 seconds of the attraction needs something. You know, that, on the other hand, it has 67 figures and explosions and lights. But yeah. that 30 seconds, I, yeah. oh, I can't bear it. We have to put something in there. You know. Yeah. Just, but, you know, meanwhile, there's, you know, Tomorrowland Speedway that, uh, uh, Tomorrowland Speedway is fun, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff they could do there, right? So. No, no, absolutely. It's just, it, but, but again, it's, it's, somebody will go in and make a passionate pitch at Imagineering and for, oh, we really need this. And, you know, it's an amazing effect and let's do this. And, yeah. you know, and um, meanwhile, you know, because, you know, <laughs> again, the very thing you're talking about, the Speedway, you know, it's a favorite of little kids, but it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's really no, it. there's no theming yeah. and no one, no one grew up loving that. I guess people might have grown up loving the Utopia, but, uh, but anyway. yeah. So, so Pirates 5 now, what's the, what's the status of that? Well, we're in in kind of an interesting space at this point. The script's been written. They actually have a release date. Uh, it's July 10th of uh, 2015. They're they're in the process of auditioning directors at this point. They've so got, Verbinski's not going to do it? Um, Gore, again, you, get, you may recall of the stories coming off of uh, Lone Ranger, had kind of a difficult time with Disney. It got very public and very ugly mm-hmm. about, you know, how much money was being spent on that movie. And and I know Depp really wanted him to come back, uh, but it's it's not the case. And and more to the point, uh the gentleman Rob Marshall, who just directed on Stranger Tides, um, he's busy doing another film for Disney. He's about to do Sondheim's Into the Woods. So and, and but again, Depp is actually 
going to be in that film as well. He's going to be playing the, the the wolf that eats Little Red Riding Hood. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so they're looking for directors. Yeah, they've got and and for example, they're talking with Rupert Sanders, the guy who directed Snow White and the Huntsman for Universal last year. Mm-hmm. There's a brand new version of Contiki coming into theaters, uh, and they're actually that's a directing the, the Thor all thing. Yep. Uh, they're talking with Johan Roning and Espen Sandberg about coming on board. And, and so for- wait, they're they're talking to the Scandinavian guy. That's just a sop to Thor Hall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we we must get someone Norsk because <laughs> they burn their food. Uh, no, they're, That's they're, typecasting right there, dude. That's what that is. <laughs> we just put in a Thor Hall reference in, in the in the show. That's awesome. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and and what is it? There's also a Frederick Bond who uh, who directed the necessary death of Charlie Countryman, who's who's being looked at. But the, a decision will be made the next um, three weeks or so. Because again, the, this ship literally has to sail. They yeah. have to start shooting before the end of this year, so it can be shot and ready to roll. Uh, and for the summer of 2015. Yeah, so they have to get all the logistics and stuff done. I mean, I imagine they have a general idea of who to call when they need to film in the Caribbean. But uh, I mean, they've got to do. Oh, yeah. I guess 2014 is like we're going to do photography in 2014 and yep. do the effects and then you know have it in the can by early 2015 to do promos and stuff like that. They have to get trailers out. And yeah, so yeah, so really, I mean, it's the we're, we're coming up, we're within a month of the middle of uh, 2013. They've really got to yeah get their act moving no, that's between exactly. now and the end and, of the year. And, yeah, You know, and with, with, with one of these sort of fr- franchise movies, I mean, again, in order for you, the very thing we were talking about earlier, if you're looking to merchandise, if you're looking to make toy sets or T-shirts or posters or whatever, you know, I mean, there have to be images, there have to be things in the can that you can distribute around the comp- company. And at the same time, if you're looking to do, for example, you've got your Legend of Jack Sparrow attraction, which just opened this past November at Disney mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios. They prop that with um, props from the films. And obviously, they're going to want to go in and at least freshen up, you know, put some new props in there so they yeah. can advertise it. Storyline or something. Yeah, th- that's an interesting attraction because it replaces the Narnia attraction that was there, right? Yep. And the, you know, the scenery in it is is pretty good. You you walk in and you, you sort of get the feeling like you're in a pirate cave uh, where the pirate ship moored next to you. The, the Johnny Depp effect where... Um, he's like, he has just, I guess, a projection mm. on the screen is is really good. I mean, you really, for the first 10 or 15 seconds, you're really trying to figure out whether that's an actor with some interesting lighting going on or, uh, you know, or what's going on there. But it turns out it's a, it's a projection. The, um, the, the whole, uh, uh, set of activities that they have you do, like, you know, you need to scare away other pirates by stomping on the ground or, um, waving your hands or doing whatever somebody somebody once remarked it was like uh, the pirates version of Dora the Explorer very much so very uh, much but so. uh you know so I, I don't I don't love that but it's it's a good space that they could do something with well the the actually the thing what intrigues me and and no one seems to pick up on this is that if you want to talk about what's really innovative about that attraction it's they have taken the technology, the 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 mapping, uh, digital mapping technology that's used for the Castle Show. The, the magic is that what? Okay, so go ahead, go ahead. The, that's when you see, you know, when you're surrounded by the skeletons, or the water rises up, or here comes the kraken, you know, and you're in the entire room is filled with this thing. That's what you're experiencing. This is the first time somebody has taken that technology from that Castle Show and tried to tell a story with it. Not entirely successfully. Um, that's fact, I, what that is. Oh, know, okay, it, got it, got it, got it. But it, it, to be honest, I think one of the saving graces of that show is the fact that when Depp finally gets up there in there, and again, this is sort of next generation Pepper's Ghost they're doing with this. Uh, Universal uses something similar they call Musion. You, you've, uh, whether you've done their Disaster, the movie attraction, mm-hmm. or, or Harry yeah. Potter Forbidden Journey, that's you know about the, it's pretty much the same technique. You know, an image projected on on a, an amazingly polished piece of glass. But it, the saving grace for me is that that line in it, so the comeback, you know, we'll have to do this. Again. In fact, come back in seven minutes and we'll do this all over again. Again, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you know, that sometimes just one line is enough to redeem a kind of cheesy attraction. And yeah, for yeah, that, yeah. you know, that does that for me. So I didn't uh, know that they were using the castle. So number one, I think the castle projection technology, there, there's an attraction in there. Let's put, it may end up being an attraction. There's an experience in there somewhere. I agree. If they can I figure agree. out where to use it. So I, I applaud them 
uh, trying it out there. I, 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 you know, it actually makes me like the attraction more, knowing that they were they were trying some new technology there rather than they were, they were just trying to slap something in there that wasn't Narnia. No, that's that's exactly. That, that there is an effort, not entirely successful, but there is an effort. That's right. They tried. Inter- yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see them build on that. Anyway, um, it, it, and in fact, now jumping to our our next pirate thing. I mean, obviously, again, we've got Disney Infinity coming later this summer, which you know, one of the playsets is Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the more intriguing thing is pir- the Pirates' Adventure, the, the treasures of. The Seven Seas. Uh, the new interactive in- game in uh, in Adventureland. And you know, d- don't get me wrong. I'm 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 happy that they're doing it. But do you, do you know why they're doing this? Uh, I'm, if I'm guessing, I'm just spitballing here, Jim. Okay. It's uh, it's to alleviate pressure from uh, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Ding 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 ding. ding. Is it really? <laughs> That's a total guess. All right. Woo. Seriously. Seriously. Hey, you know the uh, Powerball's coming up later on. <laughs> I might we might just this need to pause be- here for a second and uh, you know. <laughs> This could be the day left. <laughs> it could be. Go get that ticket. Bring back no, horizons. Seriously. Yeah, the, go ahead. Five, um, the, the, the five raids, again, they're not games, they're raids, uh, that they've set up. The, the whole notion is that the lines elsewhere in the park have become so long and so disruptive to guest flow uh, for a uh, sorcerer that it's like, oh, geez, we need to move these people. And that's what this is about. That that I mean, the, you know, it's and if you, you you get right down to it, between the key and the talisman, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's it's the same technology. technology. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, that this is it's it's not necessarily that anybody was was aching and screaming for pirates, or they actually had developed uh, pirates' adventure in tandem with Sorcerer of the Magic Kingdom, and the belief was that okay, with Sorcerer we're sending people all around the park. That's probably smarter than you know making everybody cram into Adventureland. Yeah. And now here, you know, they're just trying to to make this one the safety valve. Uh, you know, just get people that would be clogging other areas of the park to now be clogging Adventureland. Um, the the play is actually, uh, uh, I guess, if, uh, just like um, Sorcerer's Easy Mode, where um, it's not particularly difficult to uh, to win a challenge. And then uh, uh, I guess you, you collect things along the way, or the, the, the system keeps track of what you've wh- which villains you've defeated or which adventures you've finished. And, and then at the end, if you, f- if you finish all of them, you get some sort of like you know payoff scene where um uh like all of the things that you've done come together into one big sort of finale yeah i mean it, it's it don't get me wrong it, it's it's very clever and the propping is fun mm-hmm. and you know the fact that you're 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 supposedly interacting with sparrow and barbosa and that sort of thing I and mean, it you know and davy jones it's it's right. it's the characters from the films um i i don't know again it'll it'll just be interesting to from uh a guest dispersal. It'll be interesting to see if it actually does what they want them to do. Um, it's kind of neat that uh, that you know for the first. It's kind of interesting that for the first you know forty years that Adventureland was open, either you know in either park, um, or for thirty years anyway, that uh, sort of Jungle Cruise was the defining attraction. Yep. In uh, in Adventureland, and now it's it's literally pirates all the time. Oh, absolutely. Though though, what's interesting is they are now working on uh, Shanghai. Disneyland and their Adventureland, you know, is pirates. I mean, it's literally it's a pirate oh, yeah. village built around a brand new iteration of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, where it's not a boat, really per se. It's a flume. You know, this is a thrill ride. This is interesting. You know, um, but you know, it, but with but at the same time, it's so tied to the movie. That and they're doing some really kind of bizarre experiments with folding in pieces of the movie. I mean, for example, I, I've got a friend who's working with one of the designers in the attraction, and you know they're having a meeting with the art director in order to sell, for example, the moment that Kira Knightley's character appears in the ride. They decided let's do a close up, and it's like it's a ride. So no, let's do a close close up of Kira Knightley. So let me understand this. You want me to sculpt a giant ten foot version of yep, Kira, Kira Knightley's Knightley. face, you know that, and you'll go buy it in the flume quickly, so you can you can get that it's a close up. But it's just sort of like, 
Yes. Aren't we doing this all in one scale like we've done <laughs> every other attraction? It's gonna be like it's gonna be like the Alice in Wonderland version of uh, Paris the Caribbean. That's, it, that's exactly. <laughs> Tony said Kira. So of course you look at Kira. When's the last time she had a snack? Yeah, um, that's true, right? Oh, yeah. She's 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 a newlywed now. She's happy. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> um, but but anyway, the, the, to get back to. Uh, Pirates Adventure. The, what's kind of interesting about this pirate village they're building mm-hmm. is that the Pirates Adventure Treasures of the Seven Sea is being. It's for the first time ever they're building a land, understanding that we're going to be sending people around with their keys and their talismans. So they're, oh, cre- so they're creating these little areas, the little can, nooks, the crannies, and stuff like that, rather than yeah, trying to so, retrofit them in. Good. You know, so it, it's it's the first time ever you're not retrofitting this into a park. Nice. You're designing a park around it. Good. Um, and. What's kind of interesting is if the the stories are true. I mean, you've got pirates, uh, kind of opening July of two thousand, you know, two thousand fifteenth on the tenth. Um, their Shanghai, if it stays on schedule, and that seems somewhat iffy at this point, hmm. um, they were kind of hoping that they could do some sort of a premiere event in the pirates' village. Really, five or six months out. Um, you know, because I, I don't know if you've been watching lately when when Disney launches a movie these days, they don't start in the U.S. I mean, if you were paying attention to Iron Man 3, you saw photos from the 10 international premieres before they finally got around to doing the version in, in L.A. Yeah, that's really – that's uh, why, why is that? Because the international market is so huge now. Oh, uh, okay. You know, um, you know, for example, uh, what is it? Uh, on Stranger Tides, you know, for example, the domestic take for On Stranger Tides was, and again, I, I apologize for saying this, was just two hundred and forty-one million dollars. Yeah, okay. just However, only. I mean, but overseas, that movie made eight hundred and two million dollars. So three and a half times. Yeah, or three, so it's three, three point one times. So you go, you know, you go where the money is, and yeah. supposedly, that's what they're looking to do. They may end up doing the world premiere for pirates <laughs> literally in the construction site of Shanghai that, that, that they'll hold, you know, they're in the pirate village so they can tease that this park is opening in six months. But, you know, when Johnny's overseas doing the, the Chinese premiere that they may hold it right there in Shanghai. In the, oh, pirate village. the other so, thing I think with doing the, uh, the, the simultaneous release, uh, overseas or in all the foreign markets too, or doing it ahead of time, is that you uh, you don't have to worry about the film being leaked in this in this six months. <laughs> what are, are you talking about? Video piracy? <laughs> it's, it's the modern so, version of uh, of of uh, marine piracy. Yeah. So 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 you prevent people from pirating Pirate Five. That's that's, yeah. that's interesting, right? It's, it's very meta, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think uh, I think that's one of the reasons why they do it. it totally makes sense. So, uh, any plans to uh, any? So, uh, what, by the way, do you know what the basic plot of Pirates High is? Or is uh, okay, you, Angelica comes back. Uh, we are dealing with uh, you know that the uh, the the Barbosa character is now in charge of uh, the you know uh, Blackbeard ship. Uh, they're there was at least one version of the script where they started folding in historical characters like John Paul Jones. And, um, you know, in fact, this might be the first time, depending on how it's now in a budget redo right now, Mm -hmm. but it, in, in in really kind of bringing it all home. Um, supposedly there's at least a good portion of this film that was supposed to be said, in New Orleans, so you know oh, that that you know that they're going to go to whatever there is that early on for the city of New Orleans. So you know the weird sort of thing. Pirates of the Caribbean starts off in New Orleans Square, and here the movies finally go back to New Orleans. <laughs> That's great. So, so again, <laughs> you know, just again, the tale once again is wagging the dog. That's a, um, that's incredible. But you can anticipate. Uh, with this movie, you know, we're going to see you know, even more props, even more images folded into the attractions. Um, and, and likewise, other elements popping up in the theme parks is this is this is one of Disney's go to franchises. And, and they do. The nice thing is Depp so enjoys playing uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. It's like, it's, look, if you want to make one of these every two or three years going forward, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I like playing this character. When it stops being fun, 
I'll stop making these. It, more. It's like his James Bond vehicle. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you know, if you look at you know when Sean Connery was doing them, you know, he did what five or six. Yep. They, it looks like you know they had a blast on all of them. So that's good. Good. Good for Johnny. So, so we'll, let's just see what happens going forward here. But again, that that brings us up to date with pirates, and Excellent. you know, uh, in theory, uh, you know, in five years we can we can talk about the oh, God knows what they'll do. That you know, everyone will be home with their little pirate hologram. <laughs> It'll be on our Google Glass, right? There we go. Fantastic, well, Jim. Thanks very much for uh, for for uh, sharing with us the uh, the. Uh, history of the uh, the attraction and the film combined. For Jim Hill, this is Len Testo. You've been listening to the Unofficial Guide Disney Dish Podcast with Jim Hill. Please, uh, when, you're, when you're done listening to the show, uh, read us on iTunes and let us know what other episodes you'd like to hear next. For Jim, this is Len. We will see you on the next show.